Yeah. Okay, mine says offline. Yeah, yeah I just stopped it for a second to fix the chat, so it should be all good now. Yeah, he's coming back. Do you need a taxi from Lyonnais? I'm just gonna run on my horse. Either. Are you guys gonna do Uther or go, uh, did you say he's doing chapter one or what? We're gonna try to do There is a few people waiting. They might help. Yeah, I'm coming there right now. So we're live at this point? Yes, we are live. Okay, oh, well I'm actually okay. looking at my screen and is it live? <laughs> yeah, it's live. Okay, well then I've officially done gone. something wrong. Oh, he stopped uh, and came back up and sometimes when it comes back you have to refresh it because it doesn't come back 100%. It's something with Twitch, I don't know, it's or, or could be OBS, I don't know what it's I think it's actually the uh, the Twitch, um, whatever it is that they use, Flash or whatever. Yeah. Just the way that it, it loads things and all that kind of stuff when you reload it. Uh, anyway. Okay. Ah, there we are. I found it. Yay. Yeah, so we have 21. Okay. Uh, Andam, I missed what tune Co is on. I think it was RSA or something. I have no idea. Unfortunately, as much as I wanted to, I will not be joining for this one because uh, my vent push to talk button interferes with my ability to play Dark Age of Camelot. <laughs> and I dislike that so much. I think there's enough people here to do it, so it's just a matter of getting people in some groups. Um. Koe seems to have a BJ. It's a heretic. In oh, he has a BJ already? Not in mm. Yep. Are you guys getting a super long delay of me? Twitch by default no, has a um, 10 second delay if you're on that. Yeah. Okay, because I can hear myself talking. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta mute. Yeah, Twitch, it'll, it'll yeah just be mute there. it. Mm -hmm. So, what do I mute? Uh, Twitch stream? Oh, okay. You just mute it, then you can still see chat or um, anything else, or the moving. It'll still be live, you just won't hear them, so you can't hear yourself. Okay, forgive me, I'm just scrolling down looking for the uh, mute. It's on the bottom left of the video. Actual uh, video screen. Got it. Yay! Total Twitch, maybe. Oh. I 
Twitch noob. 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 Twitch no
Yeah, we, we try to like design them together, at least to get a kind of general concept of what we want, but he's the one who actually kind of does the final numbers, final calculations of figuring out, like, oh, well, we'll make it four plus four, yeah. <laughs> so that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> like, those final numbers are up to him. And then when they get the final numbers, you put them in the game, and we all go, <gasps> That, that's up to John, like I said, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just teasing. Um, so what kind of education is required for that job? You know, is there a specific education? Learn as you go? Uh, a lot of everything that I've done has been learn as I go. But there are a lot of different, um, especially college majors nowadays, that I would say help with um at least becoming proficient at doing the sorts of things that you will end up doing in uh as a content designer specifically oh okay so like would it be called content designer or uh, i'm <laughs> so i think uh the the probably the best uh part of my education that ever helped me was um doing programming so I was a computer science Oh, okay, major. okay. Yeah, and the, the computer science part of it, the, and a lot of it's just kind of the logic behind it, so a lot of the, the mathematics logic courses and, and mathematics data structures um, and things like that, or actually data structures was uh, computer science, but a lot of those courses really helped um, understand all of the different parts that, that work together in the game, which makes it easier for me to design and be a better designer. But I would say that there are, um, like at uh, George Mason University, which is nearby, we have a, a couple of people who used to work at Mythic who are teaching there now. Um, actually, our artist, one of our artists, um, teaches there as well. So we definitely have a lot of people who teach there, and they have uh, game design courses. And so. Um, the, the game design courses are, I can't remember what the um, the school is, but it's like video game design school or something like that. Oh, that's really cool. I It seems like it's kind of a budding industry, so it's it's nice that they have things that are geared, you know, directly towards doing that kind of thing. That's great. So, uh, when you joined uh, Broadsword, has this always been your job, content designer, or did you start somewhere else and work your way through? Oh yeah, this is this is actually just my current position at, at the moment, and it's actually one of my favorite ones so far. Uh, but I started as a customer service representative for Warhammer Online when Warhammer Online started in 2008, so I was with Mythic at that point. Uh, I worked my way through customer service, and then I did design work for Warhammer Online for its last two years. Uh, actually, almost three years. Uh, it was the uh, last three years of uh, Warhammer Online. And at the end of that, I went back to doing customer service, um, because I still wanted to be in the industry. I just didn't really want to move at the time. Um, so I just kind of was like, well, if I can go back to doing that. They had some positions open. It just ended up working out really well. Um, and then very shortly afterwards, uh, Broadsword kind of broke off, and so I stuck with Broadsword, and when they needed content design for Dark Age Camelot, I was, you know, raised my hand and said, me, please, call on me, and I was lucky. Oh, that's great. I've, you know, I've worked at companies where they promote within, and that's absolutely the way to go, especially when you've worked through different departments and stuff. I think that's the best way to, to uh, get people. Yeah, and, and certainly having uh, been a customer service representative, I understood a lot of what we were having difficulties with, um, with, uh, with the players in Warhammer, like what they were having trouble with, where there were bugs, and those sorts of things. And these were things that um, we saw were not being fixed on a regular basis, and so we tried to um, push to uh, fix a lot of those. And as we were pushing for the fixes, then you know they were like, "Well, can can you do that? Yes, 
let's tentatively make you a content designer fixing bugs, and then that snowballed into doing quite a bit, and it worked out really well, but it's not the best way into the industry. <laughs> yeah, head first. <laughs> So um, I guess my next question for you is, what would a typical day be like for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so first thing is usually I, um, I like to actually start with the day before. I try to end somewhere where I know exactly what I have to do for the next day. So when I come in, I usually have a very specific task that I know I have to complete, such as um, uh, tomorrow, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be testing out the uh, kind of a mini boss for chapter five. Uh, spoiler alert, in case anybody, sorry, my bad. I should have warned you guys ahead of time. Uh, I don't think they mind. But, Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so testing out the, the boss for Chapter 5, um, there's going to be kind of a mini sort of optional boss, and I'm just kind of figuring out like how I want him to be balanced. Right now he's at a, or well, they, because there's actually, they are very different bosses for each of the three realms, although they will have similar behavior. Um, similar spells, but they'll be doing different types of damage, they'll be doing perhaps a, a little bit different um, in how they actually uh, call friendlies to aid him and things like that. But anyway, so I, tomorrow the first thing to do is uh, start off with testing that boss out, figuring out where it is, what to do with it, and how to kind of balance it out, and trying to get it ready for um, to tomorrow's content stamp, I think. So Chapter 5 should be pretty much completed by tomorrow, I think. So then that's kind of the the point from that from from that point on. It's like testing that, um, figuring out if there's anything else that I need to do, and like just listing it out and going, okay, what's next on the list? Let's fix this. Let's make this. Let's create the new MIs. You know. So every day is a little bit different. But I always try to have a task on hand very early in the morning, so that that way, like I'm, I kind of have that like jump out of bed, let's go do this thing right now, kind of feeling every day. Lots of meetings and stuff, and going back and forth with other people, or are you kind of on your own? Uh, sometimes um, I do definitely uh, rely a lot upon John's knowledge of the game. Uh, so I definitely come to him a lot of times going, is this too hard? Is this too easy? Is Does this make sense within the lore of the game? Uh, because although I've played Dark Age of Camelot since 2002, I never really invested as much into the lore of Dark Age of Camelot as he has, or as Michael has, or even as uh, Talal has. You know, So definitely they always have more information than I do. And the meetings are really like five minutes where I'll just I'll get up walk over to their disc I, I'm still one of those people where I'd rather John and I shared an office I would just kind of turn around and like look at him and go John do you have a second I have a question <laughs> actual human contact or <laughs> oh no our stream down oh no what? uh oh no it's still going yeah uh, mine looks like reloading. it's just loading Okay, well, my next, <laughs> my next question <laughs> is about the Other Worlds campaign, which, which we can see on the uh, Twitch feed. It looks like someone's gone into Camelot to, uh, to do the next part of it. Can you tell us how you came up with the idea for the Other Worlds campaign? Well, the Other Worlds is... Um, so... We had a little bit of an issue with uh, doing some of the 
um, pathing for new zones or even pathing for old zones. So some of the, the problems there were with uh, being able to make sure that monsters and pets and all that kind of stuff moved around correctly within the world. Um, and because we had that issue, uh, we couldn't really just say, hey, let's just make an entirely new zone um, to start with. So as a kind of temporary basis, like, okay, I'll give you guys some time to work on that, but please make sure that that, you know, is something that we can have in the future, which they've already fixed it. So, you know, congrats to our, our team for that, because it was absolutely amazing, like, how quickly they got it done. But while they were doing that, I said, well, you know, what if we were to just, you know, kind of almost reuse some of the zones that we do have. And we tried to think about some of the different zones that we could reuse, like SI, like TOA, or, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, and we really didn't come up with any that had a good reason for it, or a any interest, really. Like, it just, we, we kept looking at some of the different ones and going, eh, that doesn't, that's not Mm -mm. We don't feel that, you know, we don't feel this other one, this doesn't feel right either. And we just kept, you know, bouncing around a little bit. And um, I had just uh, uh, read through uh, World of Warcraft's um, expansion, whichever one had the, uh, uh, the like, um, where you had, like, a town or whatever, and you were, um, shoot, anyone help me out? I don't know which one that was, yeah. I've never played it. That's a trash one. Oh, well. <laughs> it was the one where they had the, like, uh, shoot, I don't even remember what it was called now. Like, I'm blanking on all the names for it. Sorry. But anyways, <laughs> and, and okay. the, idea was, the idea was that you went back to Draenor, and, uh, which is like this other separate area or whatever and it was basically revisiting the first expansion but with a different skin on it essentially um i think it was the newest one warlord of drainer thank you smack smack it up in uh chat thank you someone actually knew it anyway so um the idea was that you were revisiting uh an old place that you'd been before but they had reskinned the entire thing and so i kind of thought about that well like oh it'll be cool because it sounded like they were going to go back and it would be the same exact thing but then you'd be approaching it differently because it would look different there would be different people there different places there and that was kind of the idea that started to seep into the other worlds like we kind of started to go with that like oh that actually would make sense now we could approach Cotswold or Magmel not as a safe haven a city where you can go there to fix your armor and sell, you know, to, to empty your bags and all that kind of stuff. Now all of a sudden you're fighting to get into Cotswold. You're fighting to get into Magmal. Like, hey, this this is something. You know, and so that's where I kind of took it and I was like, okay, so what else can we do? You know? It was it was Warlord of Draenor. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. That's really interesting. That that the way you came up with that, I like that. Um, um, so, of, uh, the, so uh, but bef go before ahead. we go further, a lot of what we do ends up being um, influenced by a lot of people. You know, things that other people have done before. I mean, um, that's the case with a, a lot of other developers as well. You know, they play a game and they realize, oh, this this game is amazing, this game is awesome, I love this, but I want to do it better. Or, like, it would have been even better, though, had they just changed this one little thing, you know, and so then they try to, you know, it's sort of like one-upping, but, you know, you like to just, you know, take that concept and run with it and hopefully do it better. Well, I really like that idea of, of taking on something that you've seen and improving upon it. I mean, that's great, rather than repeating what they've already done. I love doing stuff that way. That's a great way to do it. So this, this campaign that we're doing, now you just mentioned uh, uh, number five. Uh, how many phases are there going to be? Like, it's multi-phases, and how many are, are there going to be, can you say? Yeah, so the campaign is designed to be 10 chapters. 
Um, originally, we were kind of thinking that it would be like nine, and possibly um, adding in a couple of extra in there, kind of some optional ones, but um, kind of the timeline that we're looking at, it ended up being that 10 just fit best. And so you you decided to go with 10. Go with 10. How do you decide how you're going to break them you? up and what the rewards are going to be? So the rewards, I'm going to take that as a separate question because that is something that's a, a little bit um, of a side, like that's that's something that happens afterwards. But to decide how many chapters we're going to do, um, really the first part of it is deciding just how many encounters we believe we can get done within that set period of time. Um, so really we were saying, okay, well if we start now, and now of course was uh, probably about January of this year. Um, if we start now and we start putting together all of the encounters and everything else, when do we want to have Chapter 10 be released to the public? Like, when do we want to, you know, have that final battle take place? And the answer was we'd like for it to be October to kind of coincide with the anniversary. Um, so once we kind of had that, that date of if we start now and we release in it, the final one in October, um, how, like how many can we fit in there? How many can we do in time? And that was kind of how we started to figure out like, well, uh, if, you know, if I can, I can probably do about this many in, you know, a month and each month that means that, you know, that's kind of how we start calculating it, figuring it out, and uh, we probably overestimated a little bit how many, um, how long it would take us, uh, but that's typical. We're, we're always going to go, it'll take us two weeks when it takes us, like, seven days, you know. So it's like, well, that was just over a week. Oh, well. So I, I'm trying to think, so if you... When you came up with this whole campaign, did you have the whole thing from beginning to end in your head, and then you said, okay, we're going to divide it into ten parts? Or did you kind of go along and then go, oh, here's another part? No, it just, it's it's more like um, we we kind of, we have the idea for the big um the most memorable finale. parts. The, not not just the finale, the most memorable parts. Because I I, I've, I, I mean, I don't think that uh, fighting at Cotswold or fighting at Fort Atla or Houth is going to be a finale necessarily, but they're definitely like very visually striking things and very emotionally striking things for, for us. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine having to like siege Houth. I, that that does uh, never occurred to me that I would have to ever do that, but that's the that's kind of the feeling that we want to throw in there is like flip it around. Oh well, now you're look at how you're having to knock down the walls of your own towns, the the towns that you are used to in your own uh, realms and things like that. As as a hib, you're knocking down the walls of of Houth. It's not like you're an alb sieging Houth. Hey, well, whatever. I, any alb would dream of doing. I have to wreck my own house. Crater says, my game time is being reduced. Is there a way uh, to be a midpoint where someone can skip through the first part to catch up uh, to join current raids? Um, so unfortunately, there's not really going to be much skipping as far as that's concerned. I mean, you're still going to have to do Chapter 1. You're still going to have to do Chapter 2. So unfortunately, that's um, it, in that regard, it's going to feel a lot like the classic epic quests for your epic armor and stuff like that. So there's not really going to be very much skipping ahead, but I mean, certainly like once all ten chapters are out, uh, you should be able to just go with your friends or with your alts or whatever, with your friends' alts or something like that, and just go through chapter one all the way to chapter nine or ten.
And you were also saying earlier, I mean, it's going to be streamlined after, you know, people have gone through it um, once Chapter 10 releases, and it'll be not as uh, kind of wishy-washy as it is now, where people are just trying to do one chapter at a time. People will have figured out basically the best way to do it and go about it. Yeah, definitely. So um, already we have uh, brought down the power of Uther, for example, so the teaser. So Uther is part of the teaser. He's not actually chapter one. Um, and so his his power, uh, Uther, Ymir, and Cleodna, they've all had their power reduced. The fight has been um, reworked, uh, mostly just numbers-wise. So there's less mobs that you have to fight and all that kind of stuff. So we've nerfed it a little bit. Uh, and I'm sure that there's also going to be some changes that we're going to make to some of the other stuff. So um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure we're probably going to take the succubus part out of it. So that because um, this is one of the things that I'm seeing right now that I'm very unhappy about is that there's this huge speed bump. Okay, uh, and and for every player, basically they can just go right up to Uther with a single group almost. Uh, kill Uther, Cleodna, or whatever, and then everybody's stuck because they have to get into DF and kill uh, the succubus. Um, so that part, we may rework it, we may make it so it's still a bit of a travel part, but it'll be not something that's gated automatically by RVR. So we might take it out of DF, we might not, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, from an L perspective, when it was bringing people into the CO5 dungeon, um, that was great. Yeah, we might we might reopen that. That's that's fine as well. Like, it's a possibility. We're not a hundred percent sure how I want to do this yet, but definitely something that I'm seeing as a problem. And the problem is that it is creating a big huge speed bump for a lot of people and then they're just like well I can't do this part now so I'll just have to log out or go on to my other tune or something like that and we'd rather you just be able to complete it when you really want to complete it you know oh absolutely um, actually that, um, that can kind of segue into my next question uh, and then we can go back to the rewards when you're doing the content design, like on this particular um, campaign, how do you decide how many people you're going to need to complete the parts, like a solo, a group, a BG? How do you guys decide that? Uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, how many people we want to have doing it at a given time. So early on, usually, we're just like, OK, well, we're going to expect there to be like. 40, 50, 60, 70 people doing this. So we're going to just aim for uh, a 90 person rate. We're, we're expecting that. And then we're just going to tool it for that. And then you guys always tend to surprise us and you end up coming in with like 40 people and doing something that we expected that 90 people would be required for. Uh, <laughs> so there's a little bit of that where we just go, well, this is kind of the numbers that we expect the first couple of days. So let's tool it for that first, and then we'll reduce the numbers required later. Um, a lot of the times, it's a matter of this is PVE content, so therefore we want it to be uh, aimed at approximately a group. You know, we would like for uh, five to eight people to be able to do this content fairly easily. Five people, if you've got like exactly, you know a tank or two, and a healer or two, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, eight people if you're just like, what have we got today? Just, okay, fine. Three clerics. All right, I guess we're doing it with three clerics, you know. <laughs> and what about the credit? Is it the same? Like, if you're gearing it towards a group, then you just make it group credit? Or how do you decide whether it's going to be BG credit? actually area credit now which is awesome people love the area credit thing how do you, how do you determine that uh yeah that's all determined by like how many people were expecting to come come to the to the event or whatever have you um so yeah the bigger it is the more we're going to just go 
area credit. <laughs> um, we'll do BG credit, but the problem with BG credit is that we also have to put in like distance requirements. Otherwise, you could just be in BG, but be like zones away and still get credit for it. So there's things like that that we, you know, instead of doing that, we're just like this is an event. It's almost like uh, like a like a, a, a you know a I, I'm not quite sure how to put it, but it's almost like this this you know world event going on, and so everybody who participates in the world event should get credit. People who are in this approximate area are going to get credit for it. So, you know, that's kind of the way that we're sort of approaching it at this point. Yeah, and as someone who regularly leads that sort of thing. Um, I'm really happy that that's the way you guys are approaching it. It's an absolute nightmare to try, if it's a group credit where there's going to be a lot of players, to make sure that specific players and specific groups get that final death blow. And it just, the area credit thing works great. Yeah, and that's something that um, you guys have to let us know about as well. Uh, so I think it was the succubus that was when we first released it it was only group credit and I didn't realize that I had set it that way um, I thought it was to like BG credit with uh, an area radius and things like that and I like I wasn't sure exactly how many people we were gonna get to do that and that kind of stuff so I was just like I'll just leave it like this and we'll see how it goes and as soon as people started doing it like that day we were like this is not gonna work out this way we're gonna have to set it up to BG so we, we flipped it around. Yeah, yeah, that made a huge difference because I'll tell you, we were in CO5 and one person, there was one person, and we kept trying to move her from group to group to get her credit, and it, was, it wasn't much fun, and then it got, uh, it got fixed and made all the difference in the world, so that was appreciated. Okay, we kind of went off on, on a little bunny trail here, so how do you decide what rewards are going to go with uh, each part of the campaign? Uh, yes, rewards. Okay, so um, a lot of the rewards, uh, like I said, I usually use, leave it to, to John, but in this case I do happen to know that um, he was looking to try to fill in gaps. So, for example, one of the rewards that um, we're coming out with soon-ish, so within the next three or four chapters or so, um, was the gloves. So a lot of people are getting either the uh, artifact gloves, the um, uh, shoot, now I forgot what they're called. It starts with them. Please help me. I just did the... Anyways, Malice. Was it Malice? No, oh, it's Scholars. No, that's not it. That's scholars. Right, that's it, Scholars. Yeah, Mad Scholars. Um, Manning scalers, that's right. Um, so yeah, that fills most people, or not most people's, but a lot of people's templates. And then, you know, there's a, there's basically a need for gloves at the moment. So one of the one of the requirement or one of the uh, rewards is going to be gloves. Um, we're filling in gaps with the legendary weapons, so we're missing two damage types with legendary weapons. So we're putting that in there. Uh, so that's kind of how the rewards go. It's like, oh, well, here's a gap in people's templates. Let's fill that in. Um, to a certain degree, also, we're trying to up the stats. So that's why you're seeing some of the mythical stat caps, uh, which is kind of cool to do, but um, increases everybody's power, if you will, to a certain degree. Some people's, I wouldn't say everybody's, because just because of the way that certain stats um, work, that sometimes doesn't happen. But Well, I think anyway. that's certainly something people absolutely love about this game, is getting new items that do fill in gaps and get the, the uh, template makers making some new templates. Um, I think that's a big, big deal in this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of the fun of the game for me is, you know, sitting there and trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I, how do I fix this in my template? You know? um, but it, 
I feel like that's something that a lot of people enjoy, so it should be something that we definitely should cater to as, as much as possible. I just need to get somebody to make me a new template. <laughs> Where's Amadora? Amadora. Okay, so another. Qu oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Question from DBS: With the new items, are you going to be changing arteries, uh, artifacts at all? Updating them, I think is what he's asking. Right. So at the moment, there is no plan for the artifacts to change specifically because of this um, although we have talked about it in the past where you know we we kind of want to do some updates to some of the, the old zones um, we're not sure exactly which zones we want to go after first so we're talking about either doing some revamps to SI but if we do that we want to do revamps to the mobs as well because some of the mobs look absolutely terrible uh, or we go after TOA, but if we do that at TOA, then we'd have to retool the actual artifact encounters and master level encounters to be a little bit better and more um, uniform in their difficulties. So at the moment, there are so many encounters and master levels and TOA that is just like this one's solo, this one's BG, this one you could do with four people, this one you do, you know, and that's just it's all over the place and it's terrible. So yeah, I mean we definitely we've definitely looked at that as well. I don't think that that's on the plate for the time being. Like it's not it's definitely not this year at all. Um but we'll think about it. We'll we'll see what we can do as far as that's concerned. But at the same time, we might be doing kind of a new zone, like a brand new zone that you guys have never seen before or something like that next year or something along those lines. In which case, we won't have time to, to go back with the artifacts and redo them. But hopefully we'll have some stuff that will replace some of the artifacts by that point. Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. Okay, my next question. Um, this one I'm kind of interested in. Uh, when you're doing any of these content things, content things, with each realm having specific classes in it, classes how do you guys work your design to make the questing uh, equitable for all three realms? So, you know, we don't have uh, certain classes on Albion that Hi uh, Hibernia has and, and so on. How do you work these quests so that everybody's got a fair shake at it? That's a really good question because um, it is something that we definitely have to take into account. Every single monster that we make, every single uh, spell that we make for the monsters, all that has to take into account exactly who's going to be fighting it. So if it's um, uh, if it's Hibernia, we have to think about what different damage types are from the different casters, uh, what the different uh, potentially resists are that people are going to have as well. And then we also have to think about, well, are the Midgard folks going to bring healers to this or not? Because without a healer, they might be in trouble if I try to put in something that requires, you know, uh, amnesia or something like that. Like, depending on how we want to set up the uh, fight and all that kind of stuff, it could be very different from realm to realm. At the moment, we've been doing very, I wouldn't say simple, but the the, the fights have been very almost generic, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's been in that way to kind of get us through all of the encounters that we're doing. So instead of doing 30 different encounters, we're, we're doing more or less 10 encounters with small changes from realm to realm. So do you, do you try and do things try like if it certain class um, has four different things that they can use, four different types of damage they can use, you try and put it in where they can use at least one kind of damage on something? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with the first group of spirits that were available, like Uther and the spirits, um, there we pretty much blanket hit everyone with uh, an 80% resist or something like that. So we expect, uh, for magic resists, and we expect people to be able to use their their debuffs. So they're going to debuff the mobs, um, debuff the resists on the mobs, and be able to hit them for a little bit harder and that kind of stuff. And we expected that from everybody. So to make it kind of a quick and easy encounter to make as well, we just, instead of, you know, kind of tweaking it so that it was, um, all right, we'll allow body to hit harder in Midgard, and then we'll allow energy to hit harder. And you know, instead of having to do that and then figure out, oh, well, that doesn't cover all the classes. We, you know, that only covers like Eldritch or something like that. We, we also need to make sure that the Enchanter can do damage as well. So you know, instead of having to do those kind of things, we we just sort of went, okay, these are all going to have ridiculously high resists and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We always want to make sure that um, I, I think most classes only have two or three damage types at most, um, and we want to make sure that everybody is able to pick one of their damage types, and they'll be able to hit harder with that damage type than with other damage types, and that they aren't hitting necessarily harder than someone else because that other person has heat or cold, you know. And, and you right. don't. So, so we're trying to make sure that, that that is consistent across the board. It's a little bit difficult, but yeah, I mean, definitely. We like, we're looking at the resist tables. We, we have, you know, I've put it together into a little spreadsheet that shows me exactly who has what re damage types, and I'm sitting there looking at it all the time going, oh, wait, right, this is Hibernia, so I need to make sure. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And so you're like the overseer of all that, or you know, do you have people bringing that to your attention and go, "Hey, this guy can't hit this at all." Do you like is this before it goes in or once it goes in? Uh, those those damage things are as I'm putting them in. So as as I'm setting up the encounters, I'll be looking at that sort of stuff. And then if I have miscalculated something or I've put it in by accident, uh, put in like a, a damage type allowance that I didn't want to, to leave in or something like that, um, then that's kind of uh, either it goes like that to live or hopefully someone will catch it either at testing um, or you guys will report it to us in feedback and bugs and things like that. But otherwise, you know, then it's just a, a bug that you guys can take advantage of or that it will be a dis, you know, an, an unfortunate event for you guys. It's, it, it'll be worse or better. Who knows? At, that actually brings me to my next question about Pendragon. Um, with uh, having the Pendragon test server is it helpful to y'all for us to get on there and test this stuff out and, and let you know before it goes live? Oh, yes. Oh, a lot. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe <laughs> the sorts of things that we've caught on Ped Dragon, where it's just like, oh, if this would have gone live, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and we uh, we really really do appreciate that. And it's it's I know that it's very rare for people to want to go on Pendragon because none of that counts for them towards you know their live characters. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that really does help us when people go to to Pendragon. It really is something that we we enjoy very much is hearing back from people from Pendragon what their tests are and all that kind of stuff, telling us that we haven't fixed something that is not in the notes like we didn't we didn't specifically say that we were going to try to fix something but then telling us oh it's still broken uh, yes we know it's not helping but when you tell us look you said that you were trying to fix this bug um, long standing or not uh, and it is not fixed or it fixed it but then it has this consequence that is really helpful so when people do test things on Pendragon, what's the best thing for them to do if they do find, you know, there's some problems with the stuff that you've mentioned in the Pendragon patch notes? Should they be doing feedback, or what's the best thing, and what do you guys need for people to give you to help with that? Um, 
That is a good question. I'm not sure what our workflow is on that sort of stuff. My personal opinion is to use slash bug um, or to submit the feedback on the forum, or not the forum, uh, the website. The website has a contact page. And submitting it on either of those two fashions will definitely help get it to us. Uh, I would hope that at some point in the future we're going to try to streamline this so that we can kind of focus the feedback through uh, any of the knights who happen to be on Pendragon or, or are like, you know, very active on Pendragon. Um, that way that we can kind of have uh, focus points for that information. Um, I don't really want to make Carol a focus point for this one just because she's got a lot on her plate already. Not not to volunteer you for anything there. <laughs> Trying not to volunteer <laughs> you for so. anything. That's all. Uh, so if I'm say I'm doing feedback, um, location, what you were doing, that sort of thing. Uh, what else would you need? Screenshots. Yeah, I mean, well, screenshots sometimes help. Sometimes they don't. Um, and it's hard to go through every screenshot and try to figure out like what's going on. But uh, your logs, your combat logs, um, you can start logging, I believe, with Control L, and then you turn off logging with Control L again, um, and then it goes to your documents folder. And you can send us those if there's something specific about like, well, you told us that Uther wouldn't be hitting for a thousand three hundred damage each time, but now he is, so. You know, then, yeah, absolutely, hey, a combat log with the uh, timestamps on it and all that kind of stuff help. But, again, that's not always going to be the case. Um, really, the biggest thing is just, you know, yeah, like, what you what you observed happening, what you expected to have happen, and then, you know, why that is good, bad, or indifferent. Okay, so you heard that, guys. You've got to get out there on Pendragon and test these things. Okay, I had a n the next question was, what happens when new content goes live? What, so you've put it out there, and then you wait for player feedback, or you watch what's going on. What what happens then? So a lot of times, uh, especially with a, the patch, I'll actually log in and go do the content as well with the rest of the people that are there. Um, so, I mean, obviously nobody knows it's me, but hey, that's kind of the key, is that I get to go in there and do it as if I'm just one of you. And if I see something that's like, you know, everybody's complaining about one thing that is just wrong, then I have no problems just turning around and fixing it right there. You know, like, oh, well then, okay, I'll just log off the game, log on to my dev account and just let's change that. Let's make it so that it's not as big of a problem or let's you know figure out why it's a problem and see if I need to change it you know so I have no problems with that. Um, and Sometimes I will just go dev eye in the sky if I you know don't really feel like or cannot for some reason so um, there was I think I forget what it was that we did recently. I think it was like a uh, something in oh it was the Darkness Falls stuff at the beginning of the year. So when we put that in, um, uh, we didn't always have Darkness Falls, and so instead of having to like fight for it and go out to RVR and all that sort of stuff, I just went onto my dev account to to watch people do all the different um, princes and. Uh, all those, all those encounters, basically. And when you make these changes, does it become like a full patch where you shut the whole thing down, or can you just do them on the fly? Uh, most of the time, the stuff that I change is done on the fly, so it's uh, um, a hot fix, essentially. But, you know, again, it's not just simply like, oh, I'm going to run a command and it'll be fixed or it'll be changed or whatever. Um, I still uh, have to clear it with John, make sure that, you know, the change is a uh, legitimate change, that I'm not just overreacting or something like that. So, I mean, we still have a process for it, but yeah, it usually goes through the hotfix process. 
Okay, and I have one last question for you, and then we'll turn it over to the chat group and see if uh, uh, anybody has a question. That is, I think you kind of answered a little bit of this. Is there any new content in the works that you can share with us, or do we have to wait and be surprised? I think the 10 things was kind of a surprise. That sounds pretty cool. Well, so, um, yeah, I mean, we're definitely working on uh, the 10 chapters. The chapter 10, and this was kind of the, the big one, the finale. Uh, originally, we were kind of thinking about having, like, an invasion where other realms would come to your realm or where you guys would fight in the cities or something like that. And then we found out some things about the cities and how they're set up that would not work. So we were like, oh, well, okay, we'll... We'll have to pass on that, darn it. Um, and but I mean, we we probably still could have gotten it to work, but we just we didn't want to go through that much of the process. I was I was trying to with the other world campaign take um, uh, a lot of the burden off of our engineers and our artists and things like that. But instead, we ended up putting a lot of burden on our artists. Uh, we're probably going to have a revamp to uh, Agramon. And uh, by revamp, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to recognize it by the time we're done with it. Oh, wow. Can, can you tell us anything more, or is that the teaser? Everyone's going to want to know. <laughs> it, so it's going to be, it's, it's still going to be tied to, lore-wise, the spirit world, Jotunheim, and... Uh, the dream world. So it's it is definitely going to be tied to that. There's going to be a reason to go back to Agramon and hopefully it will be a change for the better as far as RVR is concerned. We're going to be very we're going to keep a very close eye on this one because if it even so much as interferes with a lot of what we know as the current um, good RVR um, like how RVR happens in the good ways that it happens currently. Uh, if it interferes too much with that and the way that that works in New Frontiers, then we may change a few of the things that that Agrimon does. But we're, we'll see how it goes. We're still discussing exactly what the rewards are going to be for Chapter 10 as well and how that's going to work into the entire uh, campaign. But that's there. So with and the Agrimon really thing, is that going to be up on Pendragon before it goes live? Oh yes, we are. We're going to want extensive testing on this, so you guys are going to see it live, uh, or Pendragon rather, um, probably about a month before it goes live. So we definitely want to get quite a bit of testing. We want to kind of understand it what all is going on in there, how all the encounters work, and how the encounters affect RVR. And that's going to be some pretty extensive testing. So for that testing, um, we're really going to need like to get battle groups out there, plus eight mans, plus solo slash stealthers and stuff, for everybody to see how it's going to affect their play style, right? We hope so. I, I know that's probably not going to be possible, um, but we'll definitely have some playtest events going on during that time that we'll definitely want to, as as us broadsworders, we're going to be there. I, I think we're called broadswordians, not broadsworders. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're definitely going to want to be out there, and we're going to try to gather as many people as possible for it. And we'll definitely announce those things uh, ahead of time. Uh, how much of that is going to be available for testing? We'll see. I don't know what the schedule is on that exactly, but yeah. Anything else? Mm, things that are not in my realm of what I'm doing. Like, it's still stuff for Dark Age, but not things that I'm doing. Because uh, most of my stuff is going to be just putting together all these chapter events uh, and then we're going to have to make a decision on what our next big uh, content push is going to be and we haven't made a decision on that quite yet. But there's a lot of other stuff that's cool that's coming out for you guys. It will be a surprise. Uh, let's see, I'm going to grab uh, DVS's 
question right here. It says, "With the changes, is the uh, with the changes in the game, are there going to be any more class revamps coming? <laughs> Specifically, cleric, because I won't let them play Smite." <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and yeah, uh, class balance is usually in the realm of John. Uh, just because John understands a lot more of the RVR aspect of class balance uh, than I do, and that is definitely his his thing. Um, I I do not enjoy PvP quite as much as uh, a lot of the other folks do. Um, I'm, but hey, that's heresy. I know. But we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, uh, there are going to be some uh, class balance changes coming out with the uh, the next patch or two, or not next patch, but um, one two one maybe. She says one two zero, oh, but I don't remember that. It doesn't matter, Emerald. You're still going to have to heal me no matter what. Damn. I know. I like the. They I like beat the me up changes, bad. But they were. <laughs> Those those smite changes were extremely powerful. So, uh, you know. Well, I've pretty r much run through my questions. My so, question. do we have any more questions more from questions. folks that are in the Twitch chat? Besides nerf all the albs. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask questions. So Nude. you have no uh, specific timeline at all for the Agrimon uh, update, correct? Or can you give us any kind of rough estimate kind of thing? Oh, the the Agrimon, Agrimon is supposed to be Chapter 10. And uh, if you count out the weeks, it's supposed to be for, I think, pretty much all of them. They're just going to be two weeks between each chapter until chapter 10. So, do the math. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be uh, I've, I've got it somewhere in my notes. Uh, I'm guessing like beginning of October, maybe the end of September, maybe even like mid-September. Yeah. Sometime around then, probably we'll see it. Chapter I'm 10 not whole, is whole around the 15th of November. Yeah, so... Okay, so uh, beginning to middle of October, expected there. Uh, I see a question that I'd like to answer from uh, chat. Uh, now I've lost because people are saying things. Uh, but it was about crafting. Oh, crafting upgrades. So um, with the introduction of the potions for crafting, uh, we want to see more of those kinds of things. I, I mean, we're still trying to determine what we're what is working and what isn't working with the potions and gathering for the potions. Uh, but we're planning on, if this works out right, um, doing something similar for the legendary weapons. So we're, we're, we've got two new legendary weapons that are going to be coming out um, shortly that will uh, fill in the damage gaps that the other legendary weapons have. So that should be body and energy, I believe. And so we're thinking about doing some stuff there for crafting, trying to set that up so that uh, there's some, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, different mechanic for that than the potions, but we'll see how that goes. Another question about uh, pad pathing on Akramon Towers. So, as far as pathing goes in New Frontiers, anytime you guys find any pathing issues, just get us the location for it. Um, we've been trying to fix those as much as possible. Uh, that goes for um, when pets get stuck inside geometry and are still able to fire out. We're trying to correct those too. Um, we're trying to make sure that pets don't start running in weird circles when you're going in a straight line, all that kind of stuff. Um, the more you can get like the very specific location where it happened, just slash loc as soon as you're there, find out where it is, and send us that information. That would be extremely helpful. Oh, and make sure that you let us know whether or not it's on live or if it's on Pendragon, because oftentimes we'll push it up to Pendragon, like a, a fix or something like that, um, that has already, uh, it, that is ready for 
live, but that we haven't pushed up to live yet, just because we want it to go through Pendragon and go through testing bit. Yeah, so, I mean, it could still be some time. It's not like it's a very simple change whenever we have those pet 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 pathing issues. Um, those are not simple changes. They do go through our pathing system. They go through uh, one of our engineers as well, as well as our artists. So it takes time for us to get all that through to make sure that that fix goes through as well. Um, so it may be like a major patch away uh, or two away before those pet, pet pathing issues get fixed. I'm just kind of looking up here and seeing if we have anything else. Do we have any other questions? Get them in while you can. Exactly. So hopefully we'll be doing this more often. I mean, I've tried to show up now a couple of times for the night's podcast which it's, it's been a lot of fun so I keep telling everybody at work hey guys if you want to you should definitely just join in because it's a lot of fun um, I think that we're going to get for you next time one of our artists who is also a professor at uh, George Mason University uh, he's a he's the guy who is behind a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the pat pathing issues uh, that you guys have seen. He might be able to give you some more insight into that kind of stuff. And he's also the person who put together the entirety of this other world's mist, ghostly looking thing, which is, I've just been absolutely amazed by. Oh, cool. I have, yes, I have him on my list of people to talk to. So that's going to be awesome. I'm actually pretty excited. I have a ton of questions for him. <laughs> That's our Greg, Greg Grims, Grimsby, and uh, he's he's pretty amazing. He's got some pretty good insight into uh, how a lot of the stuff works here in, in Camelot, and is uh, a lot of times he's cursing at it, but you know that's because some of it is uh, older systems that he uh, wishes he could change, but uh, for whatever limitation reasons, cannot. I hear I've had an echo the whole time. I apologize for that. Uh, Beretta, if you have another question, go ahead and ask it. A commercial popped up. <laughs> Dream oh, I like uh, that. Oh, I like that. Cl cloaks used to be craftable, and we're, we're actually beyond just having cloaks be craftable or not craftable. Um, we're also thinking about trying to add in some spell effects and animations to cloaks. We're not sure about this because they've been going back and forth. It's not getting exactly the way that they want it to because of how uh, things get baked into the character, how the, how the animations get baked into the character and all that kind of stuff. But it did look promising last time I checked. This is still like like pre-alpha, not even, like this is still prototyping whether or not it's going to work, but if it does, uh, we may be able to get like spell effects on uh, helmets and stuff like that. So this, the helmet will constantly have like a spell effect, like you could have a flaming skull or something like that. That stuff is like Greg Grimsby and he's been working on that and that's stuff that I hope that he could talk to you guys about uh, whenever he's on here. Okay, well, we're thinking I'm looking about the, the cloaks. Summer. Sorry, <laughs> we were thinking about the cloaks um, uh, having spell effects, which would mean that we could have things like cloaks with wings. So the spell effect doesn't just have to be a like you know like particles and magic dust and all that kind of stuff. It could be something like moving wings that follow you, or um, not even just like the the spell wings, but actual wings that are your cloak. You know that kind of stuff. But anyways, that's still being prototyped. They're still trying to figure out if it's even going to work. But if it does, it'd be awesome.
I did see one question go by about stackable potions and stuff. Is like the supremacy pots, for instance, they take up every time, uh, every time uh, you have another one, it takes up another spot. Is there any way those are going to be stackable? Hmm? Hmm. So the supremacy poisons. pots... What's that? Oh, poisons? Yeah, Stack part of the problem the with those... Poison. Yeah, one of the problems with those is that they have charges and then they are also stackable. If we if we were to do that, um, yeah, unfortunately because of the way the, the uh, inventory system works, I don't think that that's possible. So it would be that they are either stackable or they are uh, they have charges. And um, even to make them stackable but no charges, uh, still there's a bit of a problem with how our inventory system pulls them out of your inventory. So you could end up losing more than one when you use it. So that's why we haven't implemented that quite yet, I believe. Not 100% sure on that one, but it was a problem that we had before. We have a couple other questions. Uh, Skinner asks, are there any other changes to NF coming besides Agamon? The boating system is silly and now rarely used, for one. The rune keeps are just for stealth wars. With permanent portal keeps, the rest of the realm is a little useless. Also, relics need to be revamped or difficulty needs to be increased. Right. So there are other changes that we are expecting to put in with Agrimon. Uh, not, we're not going to do something like rip out the entire boating system all at once or something like that. Uh, the Ruined Keeps may end up getting a revamp or a look at, like we might change the way that they work or we might flip them back into regular keeps or something like that, but all that would be after Agrimon comes in and how Agrimon affects the play in New Frontiers. So a lot of that is going to be, I think, a little bit dependent upon how Agrimon fits in to the current game. So we'll see. Uh, I do agree also with the relics needing to be revamped, but uh, <clears throat> we'll 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 get to that when we get to that. <laughs> uh, there was another one. I forgot who it was. Um, he's basically saying that uh, how much time is efforts being spent on things like uh, art things like uh, flaming helmets when there's a lot of bugs. Basically saying that people are, feel that the bugs should be worked on uh, or should be priority versus uh, any art stuff or anything like that is what he's saying. So having him work on art, regardless of what bugs there are, most of the bugs are going to be outside of the art department anyways. So it'd be a little bit like trying to have the artist work on, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't even think about how to, to, to phrase this quite right. But, um, but having the artist work on things that I would fix, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to, to do that. Uh, so unfortunately, that's not something that uh, we have him uh, spending a lot of time on. But however, uh, when it comes to the pathing and things like that, um, because a lot of times the location data is very specific and he can look at it and find it very quickly and everything else, uh, he can take a little bit of time to fix that very, very quickly. How often that happens, how often we get very good specific location data and exactly the behavior that is occurring there, because of course it's very hard for him to test out and try to figure out exactly what happened to a player in RVR uh, when he cannot recreate the exact same situation. So because he can't always recreate the same situation, he won't find the bug exactly the same way that the player did. So he'll need a little bit of help from either myself or John or um, the engineers or something like that to even understand the bug that's going on. But whenever he does get one, um, he's usually pretty quick about trying to fix those spots. So he does fix bugs even while still going, hey, you know what would be cool? Flaming helmets. <laughs> and I think everybody does that <laughs> on, on our team. Like everybody is, is constantly doing that where we're like, oh, here's a bug. 
that will, you know, that has been proven that it is a bug, it is something that we do need to fix, and we have exactly the part in the code or behavior or scripts or whatever of where it is breaking, and we have a reasonable fix for it. <laughs> and by reasonable, I mean, like, we're not going to spend three months revamping the entirety of a system just to fix a bug like that. Um, like, for example, that sometimes the mob, like, walks away from you three feet. Are we going to spend three months doing that whenever the mob just, you know, no, of course not. But, hey, occasionally, you know, they're quick fixes, and we'll try to fix them as, as quickly as possible. Okay, I scrolled up a little and I saw a couple of questions I think are, are um, great if you're able to answer them or not. Uh, DVS asked about having the casual group finder uh, battle group specific and by that he means right now if you queue up for the casual group finder uh, you could end up in a group that's not in a BG or if you want to be in an 8 man out in NF you could end up stuck in a group in the BG. Uh, any chance of that? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure that that can be put in through, uh, like that, that that we could put that in as like an option of like, you know, select your BG or, you know, like list them out or something like that. But uh, I think that's still um, like on pause for the moment just because I think we're working on a few of the other UI issues or not issues but UI elements that we want to fix and make look better first uh, but I'm not 100% sure again that's not really my field so I don't know exactly what's going on there okay and I uh, Beretta found his questions and it was about the UI updates is that still in the work and what works pardon me and is there a spell ca crafting calculator uh, I don't think that we're quite at the point of putting in a spell crafting calculator into the game necessarily um, but I think that they were uh, uh, the guy who's, who works on our um, like the uh, character search and stuff like that on the website was thinking about trying to find ways to put it into that and I, I was all for that idea I don't know if that's just been left on the cutting room floor or what but um, again I don't really converse with him about those sorts of things much so I don't know exactly where that is uh, but as for the UI updates we are trying to get um, a lot of the uh, custom UI stuff into the game and I don't know how much is going to get into the game whether or not um, like the you know the maps are going to be changed or whether or not it's just going to be like the looks of the windows or what um, but there is also uh, talk about trying to get the um, the buttons at the bottom and to have them set up so that they are easier to use so that you can set up your uh, um, so you can set up your quick keys and things like that you can set up the uh, like which key is mapped out easier all those sorts of things um, the icon behavior because right now you can't pick up an icon and move it to another slot like it's just like it's old and we know and that stuff is being looked at to be changed, revamped. I don't know what the timeline is. Okay, do we see any other questions, um, Kevin? I'm just kind of scrolling along. Oh, I'll just get a couple of them. The new Herald will have the realm war back and leaderboards and everything comes there's a couple of questions on that yeah sometimes carol knows better than i do like because <laughs> she remembers all Outside the dates of the game, and all the, everything it's, yeah i just i hear about it and i'm like oh that sounds really cool and i don't pay attention to like when it will be available i'm just like oh, oh that's really good we should do that 
<laughs> and then I get focused more on like, okay, do I want Uther to have 80% resist or 75? I don't know. <laughs> that's, the, that's the questions I get hung up. You do the work and I'll pass it on. I get the easy part. Will you guys ever come out with a borderless Windows mode? Well, isn't that the non-Windows mode? No, that's not. Um, so it's the difference between uh, full screen, windowed mode, and then borderless window. And a borderless window is really nice because you can have it be uh, full screen without really um, having the same negative parts that full screen does. So there's some reasons to have it, definitely. I do appreciate a borderless window, but I don't know. I don't know if that's in the works or not. I appreciate it. I like it. I wish we had it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Kevin, is there anything else you wanted to share with us? Mm, uh, I guess there's a lot to share, but I, <laughs> I mean, how long have we got? <laughs> Well, that's, you know, so I'm, I'm looking at our time here, and uh, we're kind of a half hour over so far. Well, you know, time flies when you're having fun, and like I said, it's always fun to be on these podcasts with you guys, talking about all the things that we're, we're trying to do. I mean, you know, it's not like we're trying to wreck the game or make it worse or anything. Obviously, we're trying to make it better all the time, and we like to hear feedback from you guys as well. I mean, we we want to know what people think about and how they're they um, how they're approaching all the new stuff that we're we're putting out and whether or not it is making an impact for the game in good ways or bad or what and how and all that kind of stuff. But definitely constructive feedback is always uh, is always welcome. Well, we really appreciate you folks coming out and doing these podcasts with us because you can answer a lot more things than we can answer. So just having you guys out here is great. Really, really appreciated. Yeah, and I definitely would like to make sure that we uh, keep this up uh, as much as possible. I mean, I know that uh, some devs don't like it quite as much, but I definitely feel that it helps uh, because it keeps us in touch with what's going on as well. I mean, there's only a certain amount of information that I can get from floating around in the sky, watching players play, and playing myself, and maybe not being grouped with people who have really good insight or something like that, and just missing it, you know? I And I completely miss what uh, good insight people have into uh, uh, why things are broken or why they're awesome, you know? Well, it really helps oh, us really? Uh, feel like you guys are, are much more um, invested in the community and, and coming out and being part of it, which is just great for us. Cool. Well, it's always happy. To, I'm, I'm always happy to be here, at least. I can't say that for all of our guys. Like I said, some of them are a little bit more shy than others. But uh, uh, hopefully we'll have Greg, what is it, one month from now? Or a month and a half or so? so we'll have uh, yeah, out. and I... Th for yeah, I think it's four weeks, and uh, Biebs is next week going to be the Euro podcast? Yeah, next week is the Euro podcast, so it's on much earlier in the day. I think it's um, I think it's 8 p.m. Central European time, so that's three, uh, 2 or 3 p.m. EST. Three, yeah. yeah. But yep. It's, uh, eight, 8 is uh, minus 5, so 3. So it's 3 for UK time and... I think that's going to be great as well because we do have such a big Euro population. I think it's nice that they'll have their own podcast as well. I absolutely agree. Yeah, Fugo and Shyla, I think, are running it next week, so that'll be interesting. Yep, uh, yep, yep. Okay, well, I want to say thank well, you. Or is it? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. 
Is it is it going to be in English as well, or are you guys going to do it in another well, language? Well, Fugo is French and Shyla is German, so I think and oh. <laughs> I think it's going to be a little bit of everything. Ah, we we'll see. I don't know yet. So I do want to again say thank you to Kevin for coming out and doing this. Um, Beebs, Carol for coming out. Fugo, I saw Cyric, he wasn't in vent with us, but Ciro, Andam, and Co for running around and doing the uh, campaign during the uh, podcast. So thank you, yeah. everybody. We are almost done yeah, with the welcome. chapter thank three. You. Okay, yeah, nine I was just guys. watching. This is this is like where it's getting good too. I'm I'm getting excited here. Yeah, we stay on till we're we're nearly finished. Cool. Sure. Yeah. I came for the loop now. Which uh, which part is this now? It's chapter. Um, this is actually chapter three here. I haven't done yeah, three. I've done one and two. One and two. Ah, okay. So chapter three. What's interesting is that it uh, it had uh, there were there were several times when I thought I had gotten the encounter to work the way I wanted it to, and then I I just turned around and changed it. I was like, well, no, ripping that out. I'm gonna put this other thing in instead. But I, I think that this it is like kind of fell in the right place. Yeah, so I was told that, and I and I was like, okay, I've got to research ML4, see exactly how they did it, and then I've got to do it kind of like that, right? So that that's kind of what I had in my mind, and then I was like, last minute, like, no, 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 don't look at that until after I'm done. And when I was done, I was like, oh, well, I I did it in a very simplistic way compared to the way they did. They use some complex. Uh, there's what's called an event system in the game and the event system is like a it's like world events like public quests if from Warhammer something kind of like that uh, except that it's a very difficult system to work with sometimes and it came out just as TOA was coming out and so a lot of TOA uses the event system not a lot of things outside of TOA uses the event system but I'm actually kind of glad that I did this the way that I did. It ended up being pretty good, I think. Like, there's so there were for this parts. part here, what are they doing? Like, what what are what are they doing in this part? Oh, so right now they're clearing the four camps. Um, and so once the four camps are cleared, uh, or actually once each camp is cleared, a banner appears at the camp, and the banner basically is uh, Albion since they're on Albion. Albion's way of saying we have, we have cleared this camp and we have claimed it for Albion. Once all four camps are claimed uh, then a boss will appear and you have to fight the boss. Yeah, we are almost uh, done. Is he a camp boss or what kind of boss is he? Like um, disciple of Uther? So he's a he, so these auxiliaries are allies to Uther. Um so this is an allied camp. They're allied to Uther. And uh, they kind of have a little... They, they're using the um, the theme yeah. of uh, the Darkness Rising guys, which we the thought looked right cool. I'm liking this um, blue hazy stuff. I think that's kind of cool. Is that difficult to create? The fog? Yeah. Yeah, so the interesting story with the fog, and I love telling this story because every time it just it gets me. Um, the fog, when Greg started putting it together and everything, he you know tweaked it to make it just look right, you know, just perfect. And it took him a little while, but um, once he got it, he was like, "Yeah, so this is this is a particle effect, but there's so many particles here that if you'd be running this when." Camelot first release, like if we had put this into the game when Camelot first released, it would have killed your computer. <laughs> the frame so, would have just been oh, okay. terrible. So these are like individual little particle things? Uh, so the, the fog has kind of a particle cloud, if you will, and so the, the cloud itself isn't individually 
wrapped, it's kind of like a, each cloud is kind of one object, sort of. And we are done! Nice! Yay. Good job! Yeah, so during the entire time, whenever there's a banner up, the uh, the these spirit perkuros will um, spawn to go take down the banner. So you have to basically stop them before they uh, take down the banner and respawn the camp. Uh, otherwise, the camps will uh, come and attack you while you're while you're fighting the boss. Hey. Anyway. So you got to do the banner first, then the boss. Well, so so you kill the uh, you kill the camp, banners placed. Then every timer amount, I, I forget, it's like 60 seconds or something like that, um, the spirit will come out and try to take down the banner. So you just have to prevent him from getting to it. And you have to prevent him from getting oh, to it okay. while you're clearing okay. the other camps and while you're killing the boss. So you have to make sure that those those uh, runners don't get the, the uh, don't reset the encounter for you. I gotcha. Cool. Now I can do this chapter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was definitely the most fun I've had making chapters here so far in, in the, uh, the spirit world. This one was a lot of fun. It looks Ooh, really yeah. good, too, with all the effects like and stuff. Chapter. Yeah, if you walk up all the way to the border, there's like a mist wall on the border as well. Uh, that one is separate. That's a more flat uh, texture, so it's it's not really the same as the the mist itself. Uh, but that's just kind of to give a sense of like this is the edge of the map, if you will. And instead of populating the entirety of um, the zone with mobs and all that kind of stuff. We felt that it would be better if we just kind of focused people's attention on one specific event, one specific encounter at a time per chapter, rather than you know doing a whole zone and everything else. However, uh, next year, like I said, we are trying to plan for a full new zone with new quests and all that kind of stuff. Um, and when we do that, it'll have all the little side quests, all the little other things like that that, that uh, uh, we're used to in the zones. And that point uh, will we'll open up the entire zone to everyone. Thanks, uh, Kevin. I say goodbye, good night, everyone. Yep. All right, good, good night, night Fugo. Thank you very much for coming out. Oh, Bye -bye. thanks, Fugo. It must be like, what time is it, Beeps? It's <laughs> like 3 in the morning or something? 4 in the morning for almost. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll uh, try to make it out for your podcast next week. I'll see uh, if I've uh, got anything planned or not. If I don't have anything planned, I will definitely be here. I'd like to at least sit in and listen to you guys and uh, hear you guys uh, talking about all the different stuff on the European Ooh. podcast. Okay. Awesome. Beebs, on the year, I uh, think year. Kevin just asked that. Do we know I what language know. it's going to be in? Is it going to be German and French or both? Or They said kind of all everything. A mix of everything. I guess yeah. mostly English. Most oh, sure that's that going to be great. If a question comes in, though, I'm sure that if a question comes in in a different language that, and if they can respond to it in that language, that, that'll be well appreciated. I well, I'll tell you what, judging Spanish, from... But that's about all I got. <laughs> Well, see, there's a third language now, because I'm telling you, Shilea and Fugo, both, their English is, is amazing, so. Yeah, absolutely. Good night. Oh, here's one. C when can we port the spirit world or lioness like we could to Grim's Pound? That's a good question. We've been debating that very heavily. Uh, whether or not we should just let you port right in, or port to it, port back, etc. Um, at the moment, I think that we really do like the ability to port you into the Chapter 1 area, as it is right now, where um, you have to kind of run from Lieutenant Haley or uh, Nara Manastrong or um, 
the hunter. Um, you know, from that point, you're forced to kind of like move, make your way to the portal. Um, it's a, it is a little bit of a run. We might place a teleport location to there, similar to Grimmsbound, um, so that you will, you know, teleport to outside of Leonis, and then you can make your way to the portal. Haven't made a decision on that one yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to do that at some point. Uh, just it's not ready yet at this point. If you did, what if you? I, I like the Grimm's Pound suggestion because that one you had to do some work before you were able to use the portal, right? You had to gain faction and stuff rather than just putting a portal there. That might be a way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely uh, something to think about, but. Um, we are going to be using faction to a certain degree um, coming up, and that might be a good time to introduce it as well. Uh, there's a question there about adding a bindstone to Yarlies. Unfortunately, we cannot. Our the number of bindstones that we're allowed in the game right now is at a uh, pretty close to cap, and so we would either have to remove some bindstones elsewhere, or we would have to um, redo some of the. Uh, work on that, and um, since our engineers are working really hard on some other stuff and fixing up uh, the UI, uh, that's going to be pushed out for a little bit. Well, I will throw one thing in here for anybody that hasn't done it, is the uh, foil hat quest. Um, you know, get that quest done and you can use your little foil hat and that's half your porting right there. Yeah, I mean, tinfoil hat, uh, the stones and things like that to, you know, send you to bind stones and other things like that. That's, you know, that's ways to get back out of the spirit world, but getting to the spirit world is still uh, spirit world, uh, sorry, other worlds, because it's spirit world, Jotunheim, and dream world. Um, that's the hard part, is getting there. And we do want to streamline that, especially if we're going to um, well, especially if we're going to take out things like the, the succubus, or if we're going to change how you have to do the succubus, or where it's done, or something like that. Like, we will also want to streamline getting to Leonis, and Vanern, and Bogacullen, because it's kind of out of the way. Just kind of scrolling down, looking for anything else. I think that's about it, Kevin. Do you see anything else? And um, how many people did you have with you tonight? I I didn't notice. It looked like at least a group. Uh, yeah, a uh, group, a little more in the beginning. But to do this, we only took us a group, so it's pretty good. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> An aluminum yeah, foil hat, that's awesome. It's still a little bit... Um lower right now in population requirements. Um, when we come out with chapter 5 and chapter 6, you're probably going to be required to do like two groups at least. Um, but chapter 5 is probably just going to be um, like a single encounter where it's it's a, similar to chapter 3 where it's just kind of like a like a, a single encounter where there, there's really nothing to it. It's just, this is all you need to do is go up there, kill this person, come back, that's it. Um, just getting to the point where you can kill them and all that kind of stuff may be a little bit different. A little, little bit of a requirements there. That That's where all the killing is going to have to happen. We'll see. A couple people are asking about the uh, Steam question. Is there any updates to that, Kevin, or is it still the same situation, just kind of waiting? 
I'm not sure actually. That is a question for John, unfortunately, about what the where the steam is at. I have not um, kept up with that personally, so I do not know where that is. Alright, do we got any more before we wrap this up, guys? We went a little bit longer today, but as long as you guys enjoyed it, it's all that mattered. So get your questions in right now, or you're going to have to wait till the next podcast with Kevin. <laughs> Which may not be too far off. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know sometimes we're, we're answering a lot of the same questions over and over again, but... Um, I don't think that that's too much of a problem since um, a lot of people are asking those same questions over and over again just because, you know, that's kind of the questions people have when they're either coming back to or they're trying to figure out where they fit in with Dark Age and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we don't, it's, you know, there's no problem with any of that. I don't feel any, like, I don't feel bad for answering anything more than once. I'll tell you what, um, speaking of people coming back to Dark Age, what do you think is causing this? I, I'm telling you, we have had a ton of people that played years ago that have, have started coming back. Do you think like it's the, the Twitch thing and the podcasts and all that stuff? Uh, are you guys sending out emails or what's going on? We're seeing lots of people coming back. Well, there is a newsletter, but I think the newsletter is uh, uh, so 2002. Um, <laughs> here we are in the, the new age, you know, where Twitch and Facebook and all that kind of stuff are probably uh, better tools for getting the word out, if you will. But I think that Twitch has helped us quite a bit. And I, I really appreciate everybody who streams on Twitch. Um, and I think this is really... Uh, I mean, even if it was, uh, you know, partial idea from different parts of the company and all that kind of stuff, it's really been uh, Carol who's really taken care of this and made sure that it's really done well. And because of that, I think that people see the game, they see that it's still here, they see that there's still vibrant populations, you know, people are still going out there to RVR, and that it is just as exciting as uh, it's always been. I mean, I watch people RVR uh, on Twitch and uh, like some of these people are better than I could ever be and it is absolutely amazing to watch them and that is the excitement that I think draws people back. Yeah, there have been a lot of people that would come into the stream and go, oh my god, Dark Age Camera is still there and chat chat away with whoever is streaming and whoever is in chat and next thing they're like okay uh ooh, seven free days excellent i'm back in and it's been fab i think the other thing that really helps is once they do come back they can get uh, up to speed pretty quickly you know there's not tons of grinding for gear and stuff there's different ways to get gear. Uh, there's people out there that are helping folks and stuff. So I think that's a big help as well. Yeah, it's um, even some people who've come back on the forums have said, and the people in the forums have been great helping them as well, and just saying, randomly asking for help in chat to get us, and people randomly giving them plat and everything. So it's a good community. It's a great community. Uh, I scrolled up and I see one other question. I'm not sure, Kevin, if you can answer this or not. Are accounts going to shift over to Broadsword or do we deal, are we going to continue to deal with E? So at the moment, unfortunately, we are still using EA's billing system. And I am so sorry that we are. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you guys have had lots of problems with it, but... Um, if you do need help with your accounts, if you need help trying to link your accounts, or like if you have several accounts that you need to just like consolidate them so that they're easier to just log into one login rather than multiple logins on the account management website, all that kind of stuff, as much of a headache as it is right now, um, you guys can 
uh, get a little bit of help, hopefully some relief from us, because if you email support at darkageofcamelot.com, that is our support team. Those are our CSRs. Those guys are in the office with me. Um, and those guys do a, an amazing job at trying to keep up with the absolute volume of emails that you guys send at them. Uh, we understand that the account system has some pretty big failures and we are trying to correct that as quickly as possible but unfortunately it is still going to be linked to your EA account and it is still going to be linked to EA billing uh, for the foreseeable future. I do not know how long that's going to go. Um, someone does come up a couple of times in chat and it just saves me typing um, but the um, account transfers, uh, character transfers rather, uh, that is with the new account center after it comes out, which won't be the first time it comes out, it is something that we'll be looking at bringing back, but I don't know what the cost or how it's going to work. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we want to bring back, like account transfer, or ca character transfers, uh, paid character transfers, oh, you so if you want to <laughs> the the account trans the, yes <laughs> character transfer right yeah we definitely want to bring that back absolutely I mean I transferred a couple characters over to a Wayne and went oh why am I on a Wayne five I shouldn't be on a Wayne five I shouldn't be on a Wayne one why am I on a Wayne one I was crazy to go there I want to be on a Wayne seven now yeah I can't find a house or um. I have one character on another account and I went on this one or I want to move all my albums to UAN 1, my mids to UAN 2, my hibs to UAN 3 and there's been a lot of inter-account transfers and from different accounts, inter-account character transfers and character transfers from other accounts. Yeah, absolutely. And at some point we'd also like to try to bring back like name changes, um, yeah, all that stuff. We, we definitely want it back, but first things first, we got to revamp the account center, and I don't know if those things are going to be back with the account center revamp or not. If they are, that's great. If they aren't, please give us some time. We're still working on them. We've got a bunch of people working on it, and it is not quick, and it is not easy to set up. So, you know, I appreciate their work, and I do think that they are doing a fantastic job, but just give them some time. See, every time a question comes up, another question pops into my head. Um, Beebs yeah, just cool. mentioned about housing. Is there anything um, that's going to happen with housing at all? Uh, I know it's difficult to find a place without running around. Yeah, and there used to be a housing directory, and the website was hard to find. Like, the housing directory website was hard to find because um, it was like not linked off the main page but then that got taken down a couple of years ago and so definitely that's something that we would like to see come back as well so that you could then just click on the house find out who own, or at least that it's owned or not and find lots that are open that way but I don't know if that's going to be coming back with the account center or if that's going to be like really far down the line like after Realm War maybe I don't know I just don't know. And I'll throw in a picky one that I have. Um, in housing, when you right click a trophy or a banner, it doesn't tell you anything until you take it off the wall and look at it. Yeah. Any chance we can ever tell what it is just by clicking it? I wish. I, I really wish there was. But. Um, there is definitely the possibility that that could happen. Unfortunately, though, the people that would need to put that in are working on so many other things right now, and I, I just I don't know if that's very high on the list. I'm going to guess it's probably pretty low on the list. <laughs> yeah, but there's definitely some talk about um, certain things in housing that we want to do. Like, we would like to perhaps have a couple of new houses. So we are thinking about that. We're trying to find out how difficult that's going to be, what all is going to entail. So, I mean, 
when we start looking at that, we may also think about trying to do things like update the way that uh, clicking on trophies works and things like that. So anything inside the house may end up changing, but all that's a little ways down the line, at the very least. Kreider, I think there was on Alakazam a thing of all the trophies, if I'm not mistaken, screenshots of them and what they are and where to get them. Not sure if that's there's still available or not. Sites, um, .com, I think. And I think there's a guy on Geharis maybe that's made a whole village of every single trophy in the game and put them all up in the houses. How cool is that? Damn. That's some dedication. Yeah, I think that sucks now. I think. It's like a museum. It's pretty cool. Now I need to find that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we uh, they've already talked about like coming out with new trophies, um, coming out with like uh, shelves where you could put the trophies. So it would be like shelving areas, or not put the current trophies but like have a new set of like collectibles or something like that that you could put up onto this shelf unit or something like that so things like that that were like oh that sounds really cool can we do that yes we can oh how much time would it take oh well yeah I don't know if we want to take that much time for these things you know so the, that's kind of the conversation that's happening we're just trying to figure out kind of how that's going to go for next year I mean, we've already started those conversations for next year's stuff, so, I mean, only imagine. <laughs> it takes us a little while to get through some of these things. Um, before we go, uh, I assume we're going, that's what I'm just saying before it. Um, I just want to throw out that the 5v5 tournament is on the 29th of August, so if you haven't signed up or got your groups ready yet, to, don't forget to check it out in the Herald and sign up. Um, Beebs, can you, uh, I mean, since you brought it up, can you explain how it's going to be done? I, I think it's super cool that it's going to be all three realms can be in one group. That is really neat. Yeah, it's... Um, it's starting like a World Cup kind of tournament, so starting with groups and then whoever, you know, I think it's the top two move on. I'm not sure Obi knows this, Obi and Kuji know, know this more than I do. They're all set it up, fantastic the work that they've done that. It, uh, on the 29th of August, um, just looking at the time, it starts, it's 1 p.m. EST that it starts and it'll run through. I'll be streaming it for the whole day. You start to finish. If it needs to go into another day, we'll do it from the 30th at the same time to finish it up. Um, on and which, sir? And, yeah, Pendragon. And it'll be any any group, any makeup that you want. And um, it's our realm rank 11. And there's NBCs that will bring you up to realm rank 11. And if you're higher than 11, you'll have to come down. So if you're 12, you'll have to come down to 11. Mm. Well, she Good fun. I'll put a link in the chat to all the details of it and the rewards and info and how to sign up. Well, hopefully we'll get a good turnout. Now, I, I know you don't know all the details, but are people bringing their own groups or is Obi and our are, are Obi and Kuji going to make groups if you don't have one? Is oh no, that you the sign idea? up your, your group, so you put it together whatever setup you want. You do your, your bar, turgis, or your, I don't know, whatever, whatever you have for your 5 for 5 um, You, as, instead of your group, you can actually have six. You can have a backup just in case someone can't make it or doesn't turn up or something happens. So you sign up your team on challenge.com. Um, C H A L L O N G E dot com, and you write each name of everyone that's going to be there, but only the team captain. So, say if we were doing one and Kevin was captain, Kevin would go to the website and add on our names and sign us up and go from there. That's actually going to be really interesting. It'll be interesting to see what pe uh, what classes people think are going to win. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's still on um, uh, forums and in RSC and even Facebook and everything. All you know, we could win this group and that group and five thirds groups, or four thirds in the bars. It's a big debate. But we say what wins out at the end of the day. Healer. So I'll be streaming it and I'm going to have commentators that I'm going to bring around with me because they would be able to commentate on the fights um, better than I would because I would just go like, he just did something and the other guy died. So I'm going to have <laughs> people who know what they're talking about um, commentating. They're going to be my backup dancers. So it definitely but I know all the groups as well. Most of them are going to have streamers. So we're going to be all over Twitch that day. They'll be your pips. And you'll be Gladys Knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not doing anything. Yeah, I noticed you um, had some other questions for me that you didn't ask. I wasn't sure how long so, we wanted so. to keep going. So I'll be happy to ask these last two. Uh, what is the worst thing about your job? The worst thing about my job? You can't say, you can't been, say, you can't say my the Skype. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, worst, the worst thing about my job, quite honestly, is that every time we're always so excited. It, it it is it is it's 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 like it's like a curse. We've done something, and we're so excited to see how you guys are going to react to this. Like, oh boy, you guys are not going to believe what we've done. And uh, yeah, that's that's the worst part about it. Because a lot of times we just you know we get people who really don't even try to appreciate. <laughs> but. Uh, at the same time, like we we also like people are like just just be be more real, please. You know, stop stop always telling me that you're excited. But but we are. We're so excited about the new thing that we've got for you guys. We're so excited about all this new stuff that we've got. We're so excited for this thing that we're not sure if we're going to put it into the game, but we'd love to see it in the game. That's that's about the worst part about the job. That's actually hilarious. <laughs> you poor thing. Oh, you put out this stuff. amazing thing, and then somebody's like, Arr. Yeah, and then we're like, oh, that, that's too bad. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, when Seven John do this, when something comes out, and we'll be like that, we'll be excited to see the comments, and then nobody says anything. We're like, oh, say something, you know? And we discovered that if people don't like it, they say it, but if they like it, they don't say anything at all. Exactly. Whenever I'm looking on TripAdvisor, I always go for the negative comments because I know the people aren't going to give good comments. <laughs> they always complain. Okay, this part will be better. What's the best thing about your job? Uh, that it's Dark Age of Camelot and I like moved to this area to get hired by Mythic and I did and I get to be here like doing this. And this is like my first MMO experience ever was Dark Age of Camelot. And getting to do this every day is just like, wow, I can't believe I get to do this every day. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even ask you, how many years have you been with uh, Broadsword slash Mythic? Uh, so I came into uh, Mythic uh, 2008 in August. Actually, August, oh, August 10th or 11th? I, I've forgotten which day exactly. I think it was 11th. It was a Monday, August 10th or 11th, 2008. There. Jeez, you just had an anniversary. Eh, I don't really hey. count it, though, since now we're a broadsword, so I don't really count that anymore.
I think actually one of the coolest things about working at Broadsword, um, even at Mythic too, uh, was just the amount of games we can talk about at work. So uh, one of the server engineers has this just encyclopedic knowledge of Nintendo games, and it's just absolutely hilarious that I found someone finally who knows all of the like crazy obscure Nintendo games that I played back in the day. Um, or actually, I think he's the one who also has like a two-hour playtime of uh, Baldur's Gate One using no items whatsoever, other than like your quest items that you have to use, and the lowest possible stats. Like two-hour clear time at Baldur's Gate is just crazy. Anyways, yeah. So yeah, we talk about games a lot, and I always live to talk about games. No matter what game. Dark Age of Camelot included. I love to talk about Dark Age of Camelot too. I just saw a thing on Huffington Post saying some of those old games are now worth thousands of dollars if they're in uh, good shape. I mean, everybody collects, and certainly, like, if you happen to collect something along those lines, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any of my old Nintendo games or anything like that, so. Like, I have to go back and view them with emulators and things like that. And I go, how did I even like this game to begin with? What, what was I thinking? And yet, I still enjoy it. <laughs> A lot of them really difficult, too. Real difficult games. And just, how did I even beat this? No, I didn't beat this. I didn't beat this either. <laughs> I'm one of those people that gave away old comic books, gave away old things, and it's like, wow. My comic books were in such good shape. Yeah, but I figure, hey, if you know you got your your uh, enjoyment out of it, then to a better home, hopefully. I love flying on the butter or the uh, dragonfly. That's one of the coolest things you guys put in the game was flying. <laughs> I want flying mounts. That's what I want. Yeah, we keep talking about that, and then we're like, mm, well. I don't do well in three dimensions. Like if I have to go up and down, you know, in TOA underwater, I'm just never good at that. Yeah, I, I was um, talking to our artist about this again the other day and he was like yeah but it, it's going to look terrible unless we do new animations and that takes this many weeks and like this and this other thing and then you want these and so we keep talking about that and then we keep hearing like the numbers on it going um hold on we'll see we'll see let's let's give it some time and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll revisit this again but yeah, I mean, we definitely would like to have flying mounts. Although the fake flying, I'm not too keen about that. Like, yeah, okay, but that's not as cool as actually like an actual flying mount that you control the z-axis for and all that kind of stuff. Dragon. We, we talk about. You should it. get a dragon to fly. Oh yeah, I had models in the game, and I was like, yeah, so we could use this, right? And, you know, I'm showing him the model and everything, and he's like, no, 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 because I'd have to redo the animations, because it's going to move differently when there's a rider on it than when there's not. And I'm just like, oh really? Really? Is that what we're going to hang up on? Is that we can't do it because we the, the animations are going to be slightly different? Okay, alright. <laughs> That's why he's the artist and I'm not. <laughs> That's Greg. He's also working on the new Herald. We had a sneak peek of it in the newsletter last week. It's really snazzy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How Greg do you does guys a little bit of everything. This... How do you guys keep this thing going 24-7? Like, do you ever turn it off in your head? It's not like a 9-to-5 job. Turn off what? Well, oh. you, you realize that the game's going on even when you're trying to go to bed. 
Like, are you constantly thinking about it? Um, not really. I think that there's a bit of a separation between work and play. So even even if I'm at home playing the game, I'm not thinking of it in from the perspective of a, of a developer because I've been playing the game a lot longer than I've been a developer for the game. And I think that helps a lot of of being able to like disconnect and go that's work over there and this is not work. But when we're at work, we are just as passionate about it as we are when we're at home playing. And we're just as excited about all the things that we get to do and get to put in and then get to play with, you know, of actually, like, going back into the game as players and playing with those things. So, like, Chapter 3, I, I was very excited to do Chapter 3 and just go, yeah, it worked, it worked, it's so much fun, yes. At least I enjoyed it. I don't know about anybody else, but no, I, I liked Chapter it. Three. Let's put it this way: I did not enjoy Chapter Two very much. I was like, "Why did I make it like this? I was so stupid." Ugh. But I liked the fights. You know, the actual fights themselves. I didn't do the fights though. <laughs> Oh, here's one for you. Do you ever log on to a CSR level tune to just watch the action? I think you guys ha can watch any way you want, yeah? Well, yeah, we do, like he says, a CSR level tune, basically. Um, that's how um, uh, Carol does the Eye in the Sky uh, streams. But yeah, um, I do it a little bit less nowadays than I used to. Like, of course, I would do that a lot more whenever I was working as a CSR. I would just kind of have it there watching the action while I was taking tickets and doing all the other stuff. So if I wasn't, you know, talking to a player or having to do something with them, I would just be watching the RVR action or watching, uh, like, ML10 or something like that. So that kind of stuff, it was, it was fun. Um, but nowadays, like, I do it a little bit less, but I do it in kind of focused amounts. So I'm like, okay, well, right now is really busy, so um, even though I want to play, I'd like to see it from the perspective of a CSR. So I'm going to just jump on as uh, you know, CSR and look at how Chapter 3 is progressing. So for the first few hours of when Chapter 3 went live, I was definitely on watching it, making sure that everything worked as it should have. Um, I noticed there was some issues with the way that the teleporter was working when I first put it live, so then I changed that really quickly. Um, so that kind of stuff, yeah, I absolutely would like to watch people and see how, how people do things. It gives you a different perspective um, from when you're like actually in the action. Um, I think one of the cool things is that the CSR can see all the stealthers, so you watch people just walk right by each other. Mortal enemies! They want to kill each other, <laughs> yeah, I but they I walk love right by. Uh, it happens I all the time. It's so hilarious. In front of a door. So like Midgard tribes uh, in front of the door and you see the LBG coming and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, fall I'm over like gonna, bowling yeah. pins. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's that kind of stuff's fun to watch. You know, you just you're like, oh, there's a trap here. Mm, this is gonna be fun. But yeah. Okay. I mean, so why why would sorry. you need to be CSR level? Like, isn't your eye in the sky everything? But what, what what does CSR give you that something else wouldn't give you? Like when Carol's her little green diamond. Oh, so that's a CSR as well. It's just there's oh, different okay. levels of CSR. So the green diamond is like the base CSR. So um, it's very I would I would say it's pretty restricted. It would be very like bad to give got. me more buttons and stuff. And, you know, <laughs> to give her more power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah it's and then different <laughs> the different levels had different reasons for them in the past. Um, currently I think all of our CSRs have the highest staff level access, which is basically the same level access that a game developer has. So, like, they could do everything that I can do, pretty much, in the game. Um, 
but you know obviously like we still log all this information and just make sure that you know nothing's going on but we trust them they're really good people they've been with us for a really long time and um you know each level used to have a different reason so like you couldn't create items until a specific level then you couldn't edit certain things until a certain level you couldn't you know so that used to have reasons for it but like i said right now you know we just the more power that they've got the better because they can resolve issues much quicker that way the, and the i see someone system. might be looking for a job here we have someone saying how do you even become a csr affian uh, that's a good question. Um, at the moment, we're not really hiring for CSRs, and, but uh, definitely becoming a CSR for another company. Um, you know, whenever they are about to release, they usually go for a big push for where they hire people. That's how I got in. Um, uh, the same thing with um, like larger games if they're doing like an expansion. Um, you know any of the the big MMOs that are out there? That's always, well, usually the case. Um, some of them have uh, outsourced or at least um, moved their CS operations overseas. I know EA has done that to a certain degree. They've moved their most of their, I don't know if all of it, but most of their CS operations were moved to Ireland at some point. Although some of it was in Texas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So. <laughs> I mean, it just depends, like, where it's happening, and you kind of have to get lucky with it sometimes. So that's why I say is there getting an into the industry or? that way. Um, customer service is really a lot like retail. So if you have any retail, retail experience or any, you know, any experience dealing with customers at all, so retail, obviously, uh, <laughs> over the phone, so anything like you that. you just have to... Stuff. Like, Pretty much. be good at having people scream at you? <laughs> Is that like a prerequisite? Uh, they definitely would uh, test us for um, st under stress, like how we dealt with uh, people under stress and things like that. So that was definitely something that we had to deal with as well when we, when we first started. And it was kind of like part of the you know, whole EA corporate thing that they were like, well, we've got to make sure that you won't, you know, like give in to player demands or whatever while they're yelling at you. Like, well... But, yeah, I mean, like I said, though, that's not really the best way into the industry if you're uh, looking to get into the video game industry, but I think that's a discussion for another time. Well, I, I did a talk at a convention last year uh, in November about getting into the industry and like what the different pathways are these days and what people in the industry are looking for when they're hiring and that kind of stuff. And, uh, I find that all really cool, and I just found that like a lot of my friends would ask those sorts of questions, and I'd be like, hmm, well, I can answer lots of people's questions because if my friends have those questions, and you know they're my friends, I'm sure people who don't have friends in the industry also have those questions. <laughs> I think they have to say something to let you know that they're they're done talking so that's probably the why they do that <laughs> just reading Kreider's last comment yeah I see that <laughs> thank you for playing Dark Age Camelot hey man I mean we really do appreciate it when you guys are playing our game so I, I mean I don't know a better way to say thank you for playing our game than quite directly Exactly. Well, I gotta say, uh, Dark Age was the first MMO I ever tried. Um, uh, a fellow asked me if I wanted to try it, and I said sure. And and uh, I didn't even know how to move. And I mean, I think that was a month after launch. And it's just such a great community. The game is fun. I, I don't know. I just I'm totally hooked on this game. They always come back. They do. <laughs> they do. I I did. I kept coming back. I was like, oh, hey, Dark Age. Yes, that's right. I didn't quit Dark Age Camelot because I didn't like the game. 
I quit because I didn't have a PC, because I didn't have a good enough internet connection. I quit for all the other reasons. <laughs> okay, we have a couple more questions. We have from uh, Shitoni. Okay, I'll ask a more serious question this time. Any plans on changing the game DLL so the radars don't work anymore? And Strickens, were you with the staff when the release of TOA came out? That one's probably easier to answer first. <laughs> yeah, I was actually not. Um, TOA came out while I was still playing the game, um, long before I, I was hired. TOA came out, what, in 2004, 5? Something like that. I, I got hired at Mythic in uh, 2008, so after the last expansion had already been published. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of information about uh, the um, radar and all that kind of stuff. That's handled by other folks, so I cannot really go into too much of that. Um, I mean, I could I could try, but I don't think it'd be the answers people are looking for or anything like that. So unfortunately, I, I'm going to pass that question on to a different interview when you have the experts working on that. Or experts who worked on that. Sorry. And I'm not sure if you want to readdress. Manx was asking about the artifacts. Uh, have you thought about adding artifacts style item abilities? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I like the way that artifacts are done and how you had to level them and things like that, but I think that just the, the state of the game is different right now. And so having artifacts that level is just prolonging the amount of time it takes for you to go from getting the item to actually having the item be effective. And that's not usually a good thing right now, like for the state of the game as it is right now. So we probably won't be adding in a lot of that system of leveling the artifacts, except if we put it in so that you have to just complete some quests. So it'll be more like an epic quest, but as you're going along doing the quest, the item will level up to the full power, essentially. So kind of like uh, champion, the champion uh, weapon. So, like, how you would do part of the champion quest, and then you got the item, you got the champion weapon, but then it got its full power when you um, completed Inferno. With anything like that, um, would you guys always consider making you uh, an item uh, level or getting stuff in RVR for folks that don't care for questing. Just, you know, two ways to do the same thing, kind of like CL leveling. Um, that's a good question. Part of the appeal for Dark Age of Camelot to me and to a lot of the people that I played with um, very early on um, part of the appeal was that, like, we really, I mean, you know, when you template your character, it's not like, here, let me just go to the shop, buy the best stuff, and then just walk out and go to RVR. You know, it was like, I gotta go to SI to get my chest, I've gotta go to TOA to get my cloak, I've gotta go to, you know, and they were, you know, parts that you were putting together. And I really appreciated my characters personally. I really appreciated my characters a lot more when I did that than, you know, later when it was just like, oh well I'll just buy that with glass. I've got glass, so yeah. And then I don't I don't care about those characters, you know. I've got I've got so many level fifty characters that are mostly templated, uh, but there's only two of those characters that I will remember to this day the name of the character, the story that I had for them, the reason for those characters, and everything, because those are the characters that I leveled up, those are the characters that I templated, those are the characters that I took out to, to RVR and I did everything with, and those are the ones I care about, you know, and those are the ones that I still want to RVR with today. I think that's really accurate because I... I, most of my tunes are on Albion, as I'm sure everyone knows, but Roxanne and Lovely are the two that I 
did every single thing with and I mean I remember the day I got my very first level 50 I literally cried <laughs> it, was just, it was so awesome to finally hit 50 yep yeah the first time I hit 50 same thing I was just like what I I almost don't even know what to do now <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah took a while but yeah, I mean, though we we it's not that we want to limit though people's abilities to to get all the things that they want. So, you know, it's not that we just want to make it difficult and long and tedious to get the templates. You know. So, we still want to make it available to you guys in some way shape or form. Um I don't know. I I mean, part of it is itemization and rewards and the way that John has been kind of planning out um, kind of the future stuff. Part of it is where I would like to keep my focuses for what I work on. So, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure that we kind of have all those things overlap and that they are all in the best interest of uh, everyone. Anyhow, kind of think, think we went over our over time a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. That was awesome, actually. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> I definitely enjoy it, but you know, it's uh, it, don't expect this every time from all of our developers. I think that Greg will keep to the time limit a little more than I will but uh, I always enjoy like I said just talking about and being passionate about the games that we play and Dark Age Camelot is still one of those games for me so there you go. well we're glad you are alright so we'll take one Outlet. more question before wrapping this up so if anyone has one more we'll get that in then we'll wrap it up and call it a night I have a question. Well, uh oh. Okay. <laughs> AFK. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you wait, what? Uh so, um my question is, uh what is the most difficult encounter that you have experienced in Dark Age of Camelot, and why? Why is it the most difficult encounter? Are you talking like uh, PvE stuff, or are you talking like encounter as in like groups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, PvE. Okay. PvE. Uh, you go first, Andam. <laughs> yeah, I think for me it was probably, it was ML5 was the rough one. I forgot which ML it was. The one with the, uh, the Sphinxes and um, maybe it's ML4. The one, the counter, the last encounter for the, I think ML4 it was, uh, for the Sphinxes, and yeah, they just, we'd, we'd always die, and it took me forever to get it. Uh, ML5, thanks, Devious. Oh, man. Okay, cool. And mine I'm was... I'm now, because you're gonna go and make it. <laughs> Mine was actually ML3, and I remember sitting on my computer on Saturday mornings for nine hours each Saturday trying to get it done on each of my tunes that I wanted it done on, and I did it the old-fashioned way on every single one of my level 50 tunes. And it wasn't so much that it was difficult, it was the way it was, the mechanics of it, um, you had to have the sword and you had to have this other thing and it was just, oh my gosh, it was just a nightmare. Just a nightmare. So it was the length of time versus the difficulty of the actual encounter. In recent times, um, I think the changes to the uh, 
the Dartmoor uh, Dragons has made them a little harder than they used to be. Not super hard because I never leave home without my Zerg. Um, so we usually have two or three groups with us all the time. But uh, I like the changes to the Dartmoor Dragons. They're quite a bit hard. The, the Golan stat, the main dragon, that was pretty hard. Right on, right on. ML 10 is fun um, just because uh, the other two realms know when we're doing it so we, there's a very good chance that they're going to pop in so that one uh, that one's pretty tough because you have to keep an eye on all the doors and make sure that there's no stealthers in there and stuff yeah so I really enjoyed all of the Darkness Falls. Just all of it. Everything that had to do with Darkness Falls. But even Legion wasn't as difficult an encounter to me. <clears throat> to me personally. Like it didn't feel as hard to get completed as ML10. Just because you would most likely have to fight the other realms for ML10. And even though you could fight the other realms for Legion, you probably weren't going to have to. Eh, sometimes. There's actually a lot more uh, in DF now with uh, with the the seals and stuff. The blood seals really brought a lot more interest to Darkness Falls, I think. I think that it renewed interest, which is a little bit different than bringing a di like it, like it wasn't something completely new but it was, you know, just reusing some of the old encounters and things like that. That was actually the first kind of thing that I actually did other than, well, I did some stuff with uh, the artifacts, but that was just to get the new quests in there for the artifacts. That was kind of quick. But then Darkness Falls was the first one that I actually started tweaking with encounters and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'll tell you, people love their glowies. So just having the, the glowy weapons, everybody's all over that. Well, I think the legendary weapons that are coming out might be uh, pretty interesting just because they have different damage types. And so I think that that's going to have a, a totally different reason for being coveted. But it'll only, I, I mean, it'll mainly be, I think, uh, certain classes. But we'll see. We shall see. Anyway. Will they be glowy? Yes, Glory of is important. Of course. How can it not? <laughs> oh, I was trying to get... Maybe you can work your magic, Kevin, but I was trying to get John to put a mob in. You know how the changes to Legion and, and it took people a while to figure out the, the, the way to, to, to do it? So I was trying to get him to put in a mob uh, like that for something big that can only be soloable. Ah. <laughs> it's taking forever to figure out. I just think that that would be funny. I think that it would be pretty quick, actually. Like, once you, you know, how many people are just going to run up to it and just go, oh, let me just die to it. Wait a second. I might actually be able to beat it. Uh, yeah, but it'll take them a while to figure it out. So like, you know, big 40, Good. 50, 60 people, there, is everyone hitting it gone? What? Yeah, I mean, there's we definitely can use some of that uh, same technology for future encounters. And there's also a, a lot of uh, little things that I'm planning on doing that make it so that the more people you have, probably not the best thing. So APOC is a little like that, that little yeah. secret clerics only can kill it, that yeah, one, one of the things. Yeah, that was clever. Very clever. Real quick, I'll, I'll take one last question from Semedin in, uh, in chat. He asked, what's Broadsword's opinion on players who generally solo? I absolutely have no problem with players who solo. I like to play by myself quite a bit. I also play with other players a lot of times. Um, you know, it's people that I usually don't know. It's just random people in, in the game. Um, but a lot of times I just end up going out there solo myself and yeah, I mean, it's tough. It is tough to do a lot of stuff out there by yourself. And so, I mean, as much as we'd like to put in content that 
uh, appeals to the solo players, it is hard to do because uh, a lot of times the content just, you know, everybody thinks, hey, you know what, let's just throw more players at it, it's dead, hey, good to go. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's a tough balancing act sometimes. As for soloing in RVR, I mean, it's part of the game. People want to do it. So, you know, because of the challenge or because they, you know, uh, don't like to mesh with groups or something like that or whatever happens to be their reason, uh, hey, more power to them. Anyways, so I think that's about it for tonight. Yep. That'll uh, pretty much... I... I will definitely be 100% uh, happy to join you guys again in the future. Uh, I think that, uh, like I said, though, we do have Greg scheduled for the next interview, and I will definitely join you guys for other night's podcasts whenever I get the chance. I absolutely have no problems with that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you. Thank you so much, and thanks, everybody, that uh, watched us on Twitch. Night, guys. See you guys later. Night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Good night.